Video of Lonzo Ball getting up and down from a chair has circulated a lot of conversation on social media the past couple days. And so in this video, I wanna talk about what we're seeing in this video, if I think this is good news, concerning, and just the whole story around Lonzo's updates. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and my goal in this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. So if anatomy and that kind of thing interests you, then please consider subscribing to help support the channel. Steve and I made some comments about how Lonzo supposedly couldn't even get up and down from a chair. Of course, he's undergone this recent cartilage transplant procedure inside of his knee and is expected to probably be out for this entire upcoming season. Lonzo retaliated with this video, and I think it's nice that he shared this, but we're gonna break this down and just talk about what everything we're seeing here, because I saw a lot of misinformation about this. Number one, some people were saying, well, he's not putting any weight on the right side. Is that because his right knee is bothering him? No, in fact, his left knee is the one that's been undergoing all these issues and surgical interventions. And so the fact that he's not putting any weight on his right knee is not because his right knee hurts, it's because doing all of this on a single leg is more challenging. Try this yourself, go get in a chair, try and stand up using just one leg, especially without using your arms to push off of the armrests. It's extremely challenging. And so this is actually a harder thing to do and puts more load on Lonzo's left leg, left lower extremity, to do just a unilateral rise from a chair as opposed to being on both. So that's not a concern. That's actually highlighting where he's at physically. Now, I wanna break this down though, because there's a couple of still weaknesses that we can point out here with his mechanics. Number one, focus on just the constant movement and stability that we see in Lonzo's knee and ankle. How they're kind of constantly, the knee is moving in and out as he's trying to maintain his balance. The ankle's moving around, foot's coming up and down off the ground, knee continuing to kind of shift back and forth. That's all part of this rehab process. We call that neuromuscular control. That ability of his knee to ideally be in a nice neutral plane up and down as he gets up out of that chair. To do that though, you're putting all of your load through just this one side, and so you have to have strong muscles to balance and counteract this. Whenever people have weak, poor neuromuscular control, they tend to number one, drop their knee inward. A lot of that stems from weak muscles around the hips, particularly the gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus. If you look at our biodigital anatomy tool here, I've got those two muscles highlighted further up. So they're these little muscles that sit up on the outside of your pelvis, and they're called hip abductors, whenever they fire, they lift your leg out this way, or more importantly, they help to keep your pelvis nice and stable. In clinic, when we're worried about somebody having a tear or an injury of these abductor muscles, what we'll do is we'll have them stand on the affected side. So in this case, stand on the left leg. When their pelvis drops to this side, meaning it now, instead of being level, is down flat in this direction, that means that these muscles are too weak and they can't fire to basically pull the pelvis back up. We call it a Trendelenburg sign. One of the ways that our bodies will compensate for this is our knee will fall inward or our trunk will rotate over to the side to basically compensate and counteract that ability of our pelvis to drop. So that's something that we look for biomechanically in an athlete who might be having pain at the knee, pain up at the hip, is that neuromuscular control and if their knee drops in and how much their torso and pelvis is tilting. If we look back at this example then for Lonzo, you can see even in just this still frame, how much his torso is leaning over to the side. When he starts off, everything is in nice neutral alignment, but then as he kind of gets up, we can see how periodically there he shifts a little bit, leaning over that affected side, just suggesting that there still is some expected weakness in those hip muscles and some expected difficulty with control of that knee. Ideally, we want this knee position to remain rock solid, to not be moving out, to not be moving in as we progress through rehab. But remember, Lonzo is early in his rehab. It's only been a handful of months since he had his surgery. So this isn't concerning to me. It shows that yes, he's able to get up and down out of a chair, so it squashes the point of Stephen A but it also highlights that there's still things to work on. There's still phases of the rehab. And so when people see this and say, well, goodness, he can get out of a chair, he's healthy, why isn't he playing? There still clearly are some of these biomechanical deficiencies that we're seeing. Ideally, as we progress this, I wanna see that foot moving less, I wanna see that knee moving back and forth less, and I wanna see less of this torso leaning over that affected side. That's gonna involve strengthening of his hip abductor muscles, working on neuromuscular control and stability with his knee. And all of those are gonna be very important factors in helping to make that knee more stable and more reliably healthy as he tries to make his NBA comeback. So it's an update. I don't know if it's really a positive one or a negative one. This is kind of what I would expect to be honest in somebody at this stage of their recovery. Great, he can get up and down out of a chair. He frankly should be able to at this point. 
but there still are clearly some issues with his neuromuscular control that I'm sure are being worked on appropriately with therapy. This isn't a reason to freak out. This is all very expected stuff, but I think interesting to point out and highlight as somebody is going through their recovery with what we can kind of pick up in some of these neuromuscular imbalances. That's it for the video. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.